Hi, I'm Michael Ferrier, and this is my C++ implementation of Numenta's cortical learning algorithm. Um, the learning algorithm is based very closely on the OpenHTM version, uh, with a few changes, especially to the spatial pooler and to boosting, uh, to fix some problems that I ran into. Uh, so I'm going to load up a network now. This is going to be the AAAX example which is an example of the temporal context forking problem uh, where um, an A can lead to either another A or an X and it has to uh, keep its context straight so it knows to just lead to the X from the third A in the loop. Um, so here's uh, on the left we have the inputs. I'll advance a couple time steps here. Uh, we have all the pixels, all the positions that uh, correspond to the letter A active here in the inputs. And on the right we have the region uh, and it has several columns that are active because those columns uh, receive above threshold uh, input from the active inputs. And there's also inhibition going on that's limiting the number of uh, active columns. If we look at this column for example, it has, uh, it has five synapses from these uh, pixels that are part of the letter A. Uh, this one has a bunch around the top of the A. Uh, some that aren't active have fewer uh, pixels that are within the A. Um, so now what I can do is mark which uh, cells are active in the A and I can view which are marked. So I've marked the, the cells here in the region that are active to represent an A with these black dots and now I can step ahead to when X is active and we see that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 columns in common between uh, the columns that are active for A and the columns that are active for X. So that's a, quite a bit of overlap uh, which would not be helpful for the temporal pooler, which is trying to uh, respond to the previous context. Uh, it's not very helpful to have a lot of overlap between two different letters like A and X. So the approach that this uses to solve that is, um, is spatial pooler and specifically boosting, uh, which right now I have boosting set up to run for the first 2,000 time steps and then to turn off and then the temporal pooler kicks in at time 2,000. Uh, I have boosting lasting so long because it takes a thousand time steps just for the running averages of activity to get low enough for it to realize which columns boosting should kick in for. Uh, and then I give it another thousand to slowly adjust the boost values for the different columns. Uh, and then I don't run, I don't have the temporal pooler kick in until I turn boosting off because uh, the temporal pooler would, if it's running now, for example, before boosting starts, it would be uh, recording patterns in cell segments that would be changing over time. And I found that it still works, but it, uh, it's a lot less efficient. It records a lot of segments that just end up not being used anymore as the patterns representing the different letters change. So now I'm going to run ahead to time 1995, which is almost the end of the boosting period. Now here's a, an A active, and we still have marked here the cells that were part of the representation of A at the beginning. Um, and we see that there's some change where some of these columns that used to be active to represent A are no longer active and then there's some new ones that are active to represent A that weren't active before. So now I'm going to mark which cells are active to represent A now after boosting has taken place. And now we'll skip ahead a little bit to X and these are the columns now active to represent X and you see that there's no there are no columns in common between A and X at all anymore. So boosting has done its job well. It's completely separated the patterns of the two letters A and X. Um, and we can also look at, you know, turn off the marks there, 
and we can look at the boost values themselves, where the um, the degree to which I'll turn off this too, so you can see it better. The brightness of red of each of these columns uh, shows the boost value. Where if we select a column here, uh, we see that its boost value is three. Where one towards the center, this one's boost value is low at 1.18, and uh, this is 1.02. So um, in general, it's it's boosting the ones towards the edges higher because the edges get less input from its proximal synapses, and so uh, they tend to need a greater boost in order to activate at all. But there's also uh, variation in how much different columns are boosted throughout because it had to kick up the boost for some that just because of where their synapses were, uh, were not being activated. Um, so boost did its job well, and now uh, now A and X have completely separated representations. So now, uh, in a few steps here, um, temporal pooling is going to kick in, and uh, now we see that uh, here for the first time, uh, A, the cells active for A were predicted. And we see the uh, yellow cells here are um, predictive in predictive state, whereas the orange cells are in active state. And we can see by selecting on it here, uh, the cells with green on them here are the cells that have distal synapses from this, uh, this active cell here. Uh, if I select a predictive cell, we see that it has distal synapses from all cells that are that are active, that are orange right now, and that's why it's in predictive state. Um, it shows the, uh, the permanence value of each of the cells in there. Um, so now I'm going to advance to time 3000, let the temple cooler do its job. So now for X here, we have a bunch of active cells, and then uh, in the columns representing A, we have, uh, we have some cells that are yellow because they're one-step predictions, and then some that are pink because they're uh, higher than one-step predictions. If we click on one of these yellow cells, it's one-step prediction, we see how it has uh, all the cells that have, are green here are the ones that it has distal synapses from. We can select just its uh, one step distal segment. And so now it's showing just the synapses on that segment. And uh, you can see how those synapses are all active right now. And that's why it's in one step predictive state right now. Now I'm going to switch over to, uh, instead of showing the region and what's active in the region, I'm going to show the input in both views here. Uh, but I'm going to show in the right view, instead of showing the input that's actually given to it, I'm going to show a top-down reconstruction, which it's basically looking at what's active, what cells are active in the region, looking at what connected synapses uh, that that those active cells have, and it's marking the cells that the active cells have connected synapses from in the input area here. It's marking them in blue. The more, uh, the more connected synapses there are to an active cell in the region from a particular input cell, then the darker blue it is. So it's basically running the synapses backwards and reconstructing uh, the, the input based on what's active in the region. And you can see it's not a perfect reconstruction. That's because uh, there's only a certain number of columns active in the region, and, uh, and they each have just a few synapses. So it's, it's, uh, it's a rough reconstruction of, of, uh, of the input. And as we step through a few steps here, you see the reconstruction for x when x is given as the input. We step through some more and reconstruction of A and, and X in this case. But um, also, I can show instead of the top down reconstruction, I can show the top down prediction, which is not what 
is uh, active in the region, but it's based on what is predicted with one-step predictions in the region. Um, and doing the same thing, running the synapses backwards. So right now, A is given as the input, and it's predicting A to be active next. Next step, A is given as the input, and it's still predicting A to be active next. Next step, A is given as the input, but it's predicting X to be active. And uh, next step, X is active, and it's predicting A to be active next. So you can see as we run through here that it's coming up with correct predictions for uh, each letter. Uh, based on the current activity, it's correctly predicting what will be active next. Um, so that's really just what I wanted to demonstrate, how uh, the spatial cooler and boosting is used to separate the patterns, which the temporal cooler can then use to come up with correct predictions. Thank you.